From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Future firefighters learning their new trade. So they're becoming a cohesive group and really just building on each other. Plus Montana students on the highway to an in-demand career. You come out here like in these programs, you leave, you get a job. And we'll head to the courtroom for the latest on three recent shootings. And good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Wednesday, September 21st. Thank you so much for joining us. A Wyoming woman is in jail this morning because police say she tried to burn down a Billings church. Now those with the church are dealing with historic losses and some questions about why it all happened. Q2's Haley Monaco brings us the latest. A Wyoming woman is facing charges after she allegedly walked up to this church in downtown Billings and set fire to the front door. You can see some of the damages left behind. They were seemed pretty diligent about trying to get a fire started. They just didn't seem very capable. It's a church that has stood the test of time. St. Luke's Episcopal Church was built in 1866 in downtown Billings. More than 130 years later, it's still standing, despite one woman's alleged attempt to set it on fire Tuesday morning. A church still reeks of smoke pretty bad. Alan Kent is a parishioner at St. Luke's and was the one who received a phone call about the arson. The the door. <laughs> Trash and these charred Bible passages from a devotional were used to try and ignite the fire. Those doors are solid oak, 100 and almost 20 years old, so that it's a pretty Pretty lot, big loss, historically speaking. Billings police arrested 43-year-old Jody Moore of Powell, Wyoming, on charges of arson and criminal endangerment. Moore also has a long rap sheet in Wyoming that includes convictions for criminal entry as well as drug and alcohol charges. In addition to the charred church doors, Moore also allegedly knocked out several windows and also tried to set fire to the Alpha House pre-release center down the street. Police say 19 people were inside the dormitory at the time, but the building suffered only minor damage. Uh, there were about five places where we found fire spots. Back at the church, Alan Kent is now mostly focused on some damage inside the church, knowing it could have been much worse. We'll recover. That's what we do as churches. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Well, the man accused of shooting and injuring two teenagers during an argument on the Billings rims is pleading not guilty to those crimes. Nathan Pretty Weasel accused of firing a bullet that passed through the body of an 18 year old man before striking a 17 year old girl. He's facing assault with a weapon charges. Judge Michael Moses set bond $50,000 but called the recent violence involving young adults in Billings shocking and unacceptable. And now an update on another shooting surrounding an 18 year old woman accused of shooting and seriously injuring a 43 year old man last week. Court documents say Kylie Tushka borrowed the victim's car. He started to get upset because she hadn't returned it in four days, so he reported it stolen. Prosecutors say when Tushka drove to meet him, she shot him and left. She pled not guilty to attempted murder. Her bond is set at $100,000. A prey man is now charged with murder and the killing of a 32 year old man inside his mobile home near Livingston on Monday. Before Caden Lewis was arrested, police say he told family members he messed up mentioning a gun. Another witness saw Lewis burning clothes covered in the victim's blood. Bond is set at a million dollars and he is back in court in October. All right, we're getting a check on the weather with our Miller Robson. Morning. How are you? Welcome to the hump. Welcome to the hump. Getting closer to the okay. weekend, special weekend because it is the first weekend of fall. Get your sweaters out, your boots out, Ooh, your pumpkin yeah. spice lattes. Yeah, could have used all that Done. yesterday. It was quite chilly. We, I know. Well, let's crunch the numbers. Let's yeah. show you. We projected a high of 58. It took some work to get there, but we did eventually get there. That's uh, 30 degrees cooler than it was the day before. <laughs> Uh, overnight low down to 49, pretty much on target where we should be. Of course, no rain yesterday. It was very cloudy. Didn't get any rain here in Yellowstone County. Areas to our north did. But how are we doing for the month? Well, we're still considered on a dry note, but that could change as we get into tonight through tomorrow. In fact, that uh, 0.31 could get wiped out in some spots with maybe some heavy rainfall on the way. For the year, though, we're well over an inch, so we're still doing pretty good in terms of the dry conditions out there here in Yellowstone County. 49 right now at the airport feels like 47. Humidity is at 71%. Winds out the northeast at about six miles an hour. It's cloudy out there, but we'll see some sunshine today. Temperatures mainly in the 40s as we get up in Adam. Highs today getting warmer in the 60s. Some areas may try to hit the 70s. Off to our west, like White Sulphur Springs, still may not get out of the 50s today. And you'll notice there in the bottom left corner, 
starting to see some rain come in later tonight. Mm. We'll tell you what that's all about here in just a bit. Oh man, I had the wind. We had the windows open last night. It was, oh, it was chilly perfect. in the house. Very nice. But it's nice. It is yeah. very nice out there. Unfortunately, we are going to warm back up. Maybe by Tuesday of next week, 10 degrees above the norm. No extreme heat, but uh, until we get there, pretty seasonal. Well, that's okay because I'm not really sure I'm ready to go that cold quite yet. So. Okay. All right. Well, you may get a bit of a break. Thanks for the great weather. I appreciate do it. Do what I can. All right, Miller. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, there is some training underway this morning morning for a brand new batch of firefighters. 11 Billings recruits and one from Lockwood are taking part in 14 weeks of intense hands on learning. But as Q2's Kelsey Marison tells us, it won't be long before you see them in action. Now notice when he ignited that, notice how the smoke is suddenly gone. Where'd it go? It may not be the largest fire you've ever seen, but this is where every firefighter's career begins, at a training just like this one, at Fire Station 1 in Billings. Um, they're all very, very eager to learn. Um, some have really strong skills, and like I said, some are brand new, um, so they're just kind of becoming a cohesive group. Um, and really just building on each other, which is what our job's about, is teamwork. Chelsea Thompson was once a recruit herself, 19 years ago. She was the first female recruit the Billings Fire Department had ever seen. Now, she works as the assistant training chief, helping new recruits learn the ropes. This is one of the coolest things we've um, done in the last probably five to six years. Um, and we look at a lot of different things. So uh, they come every day ready, eager to learn, um, and we have a lot for them. The controlled burn of a miniature house gives recruits a first-hand look at how a fire develops and grows, and the impact ventilation can have. Recruits also use thermal imaging for a better idea of what's happening inside. I and mean, that's allowing them to read temperatures in different parts of the building. Thompson says the program has changed quite a bit since she was a recruit, with many improvements and advances thanks to new technology. These exercises allow the firefighters to gain experience on a smaller scale, but it leaves a big impact on the recruits. Referring back to this information, I've kind of remember back when on this house, when we did this with the door, um, this is what's kind of going on here on the bigger scale because you can't see it while you're inside of a building. We weren't able to speak with any of the recruits on this day because Thompson didn't want the interviews to distract them from their learning. This class will finish the program just before Thanksgiving and will then be ready to tackle fires on a much larger scale, helping keep our community safe. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. All right, thanks, Kelsey. The Billings Chamber of Commerce wants to keep you living and working in the Magic City, so they are rolling out a brand new campaign called You Belong in Billings. New numbers do show that four people move into Billings for every one person who leaves. However, several other Montana cities have even higher numbers. Well, chamber members say their goal is to better connect residents with the community, making sure everyone feels included. When they get to Billings, they're just not feeling like they're really a part of things, and we want to help foster that. Those of the chambers say the city's hospitals are largest employers are also investing in diversity, making a bigger effort to encourage community involvement and also reworking their dress codes. The man in charge of Yellowstone County elections for the last 17 years is retiring. Rhett Rutherford is stepping away on October 7th, a month before the midterm. Former Deputy County Attorney Kevin Gillen will take over on an interim basis until that position is filled. On new this morning, Montana's Attorney General is joining 23 other states trying to fight how gun purchases are tracked. Visa, MasterCard and American Express will start tracking when credit cards are used at gun stores. The 24 Attorneys General argue the move violates consumer protection and antitrust laws. But the credit card companies say it's meant to help banks report suspicious activity. They also say it only identifies the card user, not what they buy. Happening this morning, President Joe Biden is set to give his speech at the United Nations General Assembly. CBS's Bradley Blackburn previews what the president's going to say. President Biden arrived in New York ahead of his address today at the UN General Assembly. The president's annual speech before world leaders is expected to offer a firm rebuke of Russia for its war on Ukraine, Europe's biggest conflict since World War II. This comes as Russian-controlled regions of eastern and southern Ukraine announced plans to begin voting this week to become integral parts of Russia. These referenda are an affront to the principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity that underpin the international system and let lie at the heart of the United Nations Charter. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin today announced a partial mobilization of citizens in the reserve in Russia as Moscow loses ground on the battlefield in Ukraine. He also warned the West that, quote, it's not a bluff that Russia would use all the means at its disposal to protect its territory. Ukraine's president will also address the assembly today, the only world leader given permission to do so virtually via a pre-recorded video, despite Russia's objections. Administration officials say President Biden will also make a significant announcement about efforts to fight global food insecurity, as well as detail how the U.S. has, quote, restored its global leadership and the integrity of its word on the world stage. In what's set to be a long day for the president at the U.N., he has several key meetings, including talks with Britain's new prime minister, Liz Truss. And tonight, President Biden and the First Lady will host the so-called Leaders Reception, where they have invited almost every head of delegation from around the world. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Well, President Biden will urge allies to meet an $18 billion goal to replenish the global fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria. Hurricane Fiona strengthening and now moving north toward Bermuda. Multiple people have died now in Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Nearly three feet of rain in Puerto Rico led to raging flood waters. The storm cut off power to most of the island and officials say it will be days before the full extent of the damage is known. New this morning, the FDA says its response to the baby formula shortage was slow in processing a whistleblower complaint. A new report is disclosing what led to the shortage, which forced the U.S. to import formula from overseas. Now officials say they've got plans in place to avoid future supply shortages and ensure parents will always have access to formula. Uh, we know that truck drivers are badly needed and new this morning. We are learning how Montana is pitching in to help a new Montana trade school offering free CDL training. As MTN's John Amy explains, it comes at a time when the shortage will hit 160,000 by the year 2030. There's a big demand in Montana and across the country for skilled workers and driving a big rig like that is part of that demand. And that's why Highlands College in Butte is trying to train the next generation to meet that demand. I think you're being up to about 1,200 straight up. A lot of them have never been in a truck with this or any vehicle with a standard transmission or a clutch. So we're starting a lot of it from right from the scratch. So it's uh, real interesting and it's amazing how quickly it, uh, these guys pick on to it. The two-year college, which is part of Montana Tech, has been running its truck driving course for about a year where students in the lineman program can earn their commercial driver's license. The program will also be open this fall to people just wanting to earn their CDL. It's about getting more people trained in skilled trades. These students come in, they're here for a semester, uh, six weeks or two years, and they come out, they're ready to go to work. They're, they're hands on and they can go. According to the International Road Transport Union, there's a shortage of commercial drivers. So students can expect to find work once they've completed their training. You come out here like in these programs, you leave, you get a job, you go to four years of school. Your one thing you're guaranteed is you're going to own a student loan, you know. Here you're going to start off making money. Highlands College recently purchased this 53-foot hauler with federal COVID-19 economic relief funding to help students get their hands-on training. This is, this is a different game. It's nothing like driving a half-ton manual or a three-quarter ton or even a one-ton manual. It's, it's not the same. So I'm here with Robert. He's doing his first real drive in a rig this big, and it's challenging, but it's this hands-on experience that's going to make him a better driver. In the classroom, I don't learn too well. I've always learned better with my hands, and so getting out here, getting on the poles, getting in the truck, it's, it's way more constructive for me. I can apply that easier. I can learn from it easier. In Butte, John Amy. MTN News. 
Okay, this morning we are diving into student loan forgiveness as the Biden administration releases some new information on who is eligible. And we're breaking down those numbers for Montana too. It seems that 40 million loan borrowers may have some sort of student loan debt canceled, but in Montana, 120,000 people are eligible for that $10,000 in debt relief. 75,000 for those Pell Grant recipients. That's about $20,000 that will get wiped away. To qualify for the cancellation, a person must make less than $125,000 a year. However, Republicans are trying to get the administration to revoke the plan, fearing that will have a negative impact on inflation. We'll keep you posted on what happens with that.